Hello, this is Eric D. Kirk for MamaWorld.com and welcome to the second part of our character animation tutorial series for After Effects. In the first part, you learned how to create a skeleton for our character. Now we connect the character to this skeleton using the puppet tool and some eye expressions. When you attach puppet pins to a skeleton, you can easily end up with bad results, as you can see here. When I move a leg, the skirt moves in a very unnatural way. In the rig we are creating, you can see that the skirt is still influenced by the bones of the two legs and moves independently of the legs and feels more natural. Just as a side note, in 3D animation, the skinning process is the one where you connect a 3D animation rig to 3D geometry. In our case, we are still calling it skinning, although we are connecting a 2D rig to a 2D graphic. Before we start the skinning process, we need to split the puppet into individual parts. You can see that we have one layer for each leg, one layer for the body including the skirt, one layer for the arm, one layer for the head, and a few layers for the baby buggy that we will animate later. By having all of these parts on different layers, we can animate them independently. We start with the arm. If, as in our case, the layer is a pre-comp, we first make sure that the collapse transformations is disabled to ensure that the puppet pin link that we are going to create in a second will work properly. Now we select the arm layer and use the puppet pin tool to create three puppet pins. One at the anchor point of the upper arm bone, one at the anchor point of the lower arm bone, and one at the anchor point of the hand bone. Now we reveal the position of these three pins in the timeline and choose the link puppet pin to layer expression in the eye expressions library. This expression is very easy to use. We just enter the name of the layer that the puppet pin should be linked to and apply it to the position of the respective puppet pin. We link the puppet pin at the anchor point of the upper arm layer to the upper arm bone layer. Then the second pin to the lower arm bone layer and the third pin to the hand bone. Now we have linked the three pins to the respective layers of our skeleton and as you can see the arm follows our skeleton nicely. If necessary, we can refine the skinning with more puppet pins. Currently, the arm is bending at the elbow with a very large radius. To improve that, we add two more pins at the upper and lower end of the elbow. For each of them, we create an additional null layer and link the pins to them. Then we place the nulls where the pins should be located. Finally, we parent the nulls to the upper and lower arm bone respectively so that the nulls, and hence all of the puppet pins, move nicely with the bones. As you can see, now the arm bends only in the small region around the elbow. The skinning of the legs works exactly as the skinning of the arm, so I won't be showing the details here. As you can see, the tips of the toes are not really connected to the skeleton. We could change this as before by adding another puppet pin and linking it to a null layer, but in this case, the movement of the foot looks pretty natural, so we'll keep it as it is. Usually, it is a good idea to only introduce additional puppet pins if it is really necessary. Now we want to make the skirt move with the legs. We start again with the puppet tool and add two pins at the hip and two at the lower end of the skirt. In order to distinguish the pins easier, we give them meaningful names. The pins at the hip should not move at all, but the lower end of the skirt should move with the legs. In contrast to all the rigging that we've done so far, these pins should not just be attached to a single bone. Instead, these pins should be influenced by the movement of both the left leg and the right leg. To achieve this, we use the soft puppet pin to layers expression instead of the simple link puppet pin to layer that we've used so far. As you can see, in this expression you can enter several layers which the pin should follow. In our case, we should choose the right lower leg bone and the left lower leg bone layers since they have their anchor points at the knees of our character and these knees are the points that should drive the animation of our puppet pins. We keep the weight of both layers as one to ensure both knees have the same influence. Now we apply the expression to the puppet pin at the front side of the skirt. As you can see, the pin jumps to a position between the two knees. If I move one of the legs, the skirt also moves. To correct the position of the pin, we can enter a pin offset value in the expression and apply it again. In our case, we want to move the pin a little bit up and to the right to place it in roughly at its original position. 
Now the skirt looks nice again and follows the movement of both legs. But overall, the skirt seems to move a little bit too much. So we use the blend with original parameter to reduce the movement of the skirt to about 50%. Now we apply the same expression to the pin on the back side of the skirt. We just have to change the pin offset parameter since this pin must be moved a little to the left instead of a little to the right. Now both pins are influenced by the knees of our skeleton and the skirt animates nicely when we move the legs. Of course, if we move the legs to extreme positions, the skirt does not follow accurately anymore. But we just need to ensure that it looks good for the normal animations that we want our character to use. The only thing that is not yet okay is that the chest moves when we move the legs. To avoid that, we add another puppet pin to the chest. We don't have to link this pin to any movement, so the chest just stays where it is. In this tutorial, you learned how to connect the character to her skeleton using eye expressions and the puppet tool. In the next part of our series, I will show you how to create an interactive walk cycle so that the character automatically starts moving her legs when you keyframe her position. Again, this is Eric Kirk, and we'll see you next time, folks.